right. Slim Jims and uh, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So bacon, yeah, and cheddar cheese, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, we are back, Melissa. Yes. How was your Thanksgiving? It was pretty good until everybody got sick. I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. I know. It was tough because, you know, we recorded the flu episode <laughs> and then we just got blown up yes, with so, flu. Yes. But, you know, we're glad we're back. Back to common sense medicine. Mm-hmm. And since it is the new year, we're going to be talking about New Year's resolutions, specifically diets. Yes. Because that's what most people make New Year's resolutions about. It's usually some sort of health goal. Right, right, right. And I think the hard thing is there's so many diets out there. There's so many fads and stuff like that um, that we, as expert clinicians, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to break it down for, for people so they can understand what this is about. So again, today's episode, uh, or the point of the, po- the, the whole podcast is to try to make all this information out there, all this complex stuff. We want to make it common. So that people can better understand what they're doing for their health. Uh, and of course, we cover a variety of topics from infections to weight loss shots. Uh, today, though, talking and focusing in on diets or meat, essentially food plants. Yeah. Yep. We're going to talk about, um, yeah, diet today in particular, low carb diets, mm-hmm. just because that's a popular one. Um, so we're going to kind of break that down a little bit. Yeah, and I think you're exactly right, Melissa. I feel like every maybe year, a new variation diet comes out, but the concept is the same. Mm -hmm. It's just another lower carbohydrate diet. So an example would be keto. Keto is a diet. When we were younger, Atkins was the diet that was out Mm -hmm. there. Very similar concept. Today, the lion carnivore diet. (laughs) Uh, Which is really what, funny. How did we get here? I mean, Melissa, if we named it the <laughs> hyena diet, I don't think it would... It wouldn't have the same appeal. No, no, no. But the lion, you know, it's massive, proud. Uh, yeah. The only thing I thought was interesting is like, we're not lying. Like, we don't, we don't have... I think you said we don't have claws. Yeah. Don't have canines. I mean, we do, but they're pretty tiny. <laughs> right, 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 right. Our teeth is designed yes. as omnivores. Yes. Uh, so anyway, but I mean... I, I, okay, but at the end of the day, the whole concept of that again is higher protein, higher fat, lower carbohydrate diet. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we'll be going over maybe the history of it. Uh, we'll be going over the concept of it, uh, and then of course some of the health concerns that uh, maybe some of the experts have, and then ending up with maybe some real world, what we've seen, uh, what the data has shown in real world practice of people who do diets like this, uh, and then maybe some expert consensus. Because really, at the end of the day, I'll be honest, just as a disclosure, it is really hard to do diet studies, right? Because you have to isolate like just their food and try not to isolate. So, okay, what about if they're different age? What if they're different socioeconomic status? What if they're from the South versus the North? I mean, it's really hard to isolate all those factors. So that's why diet studies have always been difficult. Uh, but, you know, you can see trends in the population or trends in groups. And so, um, well, in the, the strict evidence-based medicine stage, it, you can't grade it as a grade A. You can definitely grade it as expert consensus opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And you're the expert, Melissa. I don't know about that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, let's talk about this first. So let's start with a keto diet. So I I was reading because I like to read. Uh, Really interesting idea. You know, keto diet actually was invented back in the 1920s. Uh, It was discovered by Madame Curie. So Madame Curie, for people who don't know, is like the radioactive physician scientist from Poland, then naturalized to France. Brilliant lady, won two Nobel Prizes in two different categories really really brilliant uh but what she was trying to do is they were trying to cure epilepsy back in like the 1920s and so obviously you didn't have medications for epilepsy at that time and what they discovered is in kids or adults when they don't eat a lot of carbohydrates and they get them into this ketosis state their epilepsy seems to improve significantly Uh, now that uh, was essentially the, the start concept over time you know, we started having epilepsy drugs. We don't need that anymore. But it has come back again. All right. Yes. Keto diet. Oh, sorry. Atkins diet. Very similar. Started back in the 1960s, 70s. 
uh, by a cardiologist, Dr. Atkins. And same concept, high fat, high protein, very, very restrictive in carbohydrates. Uh, and they found out that people seem to lose a lot of weight uh, with this. And the, again, the key, Atkins didn't say it, but it was ketosis, right? So, Melissa, do you want to tell them what ketosis means or is? You go ahead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So your body uses two different sources of energy, two main sources. The first one, of course, is sugar. Uh, and so whenever we eat carbohydrates, that level is always in the bloodstream. So you always have access to sugar. Uh, and so your body never needs to use the other uh, form. But if you eliminate sugar or you just don't eat. So let's say you're caught in an island somewhere, right? And you're starving and you're hungry. The first 24 hours on that island, you will use your glycogen storages. So those are storage sugars in your liver, very easy to access. And your body will go through a process called gluconeogenesis. See, girl, it just sound, <laughs> sounds so smart. Uh, and make sugar in the bloodstream. Uh, but after about 24 hours, when you're out of that uh, source, your body then shifts to something called ketones. So ketones uh, are a source of energy that mainly comes from fat. And so when you do that, your brain can still use ketones, just like you can use sugar. Uh, but then essentially, this is what people say, I am starting to burn fat. Now, this happens a lot when people fast. So if you like get stuck on an island for 24 hours, you're going to be in a fasting state, usually within 24, uh, 36 hours. You know, if you're fasting for religious reasons, so some people will do long, long fasts, like the Daniel fast, which we'll talk about that in the next episode. Um, but the idea is your body is using this source of energy, which is mainly coming from fat, which is what it's meant for. You know, back in the day, we would have periods where we would fast. You know, the crops don't grow well. You're not eating well for three weeks. Your body will use the energy it's stored in fat for that. Uh, the idea of keto and Atkins is to try to keep you in that state for a long, long time. So if I don't give it any more sugar, or if I don't give it, but I only give it proteins and I only give the body fat, then the body will have to continue to stay in that ketosis state. And hence, people start losing weight. Losing weight. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why these diets have been shown to be very effective for weight loss, and that's why they're used. Um, people like to see those fast results. And so a lot of times that's, you know, the first appeal of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, a, a couple of things, Melissa, I think when people started seeing this was obviously in the United States, we've been doing this low fat diet for a long time. And these people came in with, hey, we need to add a lot of fat, sometimes 30, 40, 50% of the diet. I mean, as a clinician, when you hear that, what what is your first response? <laughs> I just worry about people's arteries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a lot of fat, mm -hmm. you know. And yes, we need fats and healthy fats. Mm -hmm. But, too, you know, there's always too much of a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you said that buzzword, Melissa, because a lot of people want to know. Okay. So what is considered, I guess, a healthy fat? Well, we, you know, people are, okay, we're going to increase fat. What are some of the healthy fats or some of these what they call polyunsaturated fats? Yeah, so we want unsaturated fats, and those can come from most of the time a lot of different plant-type fats. So things like avocado, nuts, um, canola oil even, um, olive oil, those types of things. Um, the fats that we want to avoid or not overdo is the saturated fat. And that tends to come from the fattier animal products, uh, things like high fat dairy, cheese, butter, ice cream, everybody's favorite. <laughs> um, and then some of the fattier meats too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually really, really important. I think, you know, while it is hard to link, again, like we said, diet studies are really hard linking, you know, large amounts of, you know, saturated fats to heart disease can be a little tricky. The expert consensus is, Fats are important, you know, fats are important for hormones, fats are important for life, but picking the right type of fat is very important. So like you said, the, the uh, fishes. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I, I forgot fish. Well, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's not catfish, you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're talking like uh, salmon, mm -hmm. cod, sardines. Um, some, some of these fishes, these oily fishes, really good omega fats. Those are actually really helpful for the body. Actually has been shown to improve your cholesterol uh, profile. Um, the animal product fats, uh, those are a little like, sure, in mild amounts is fine, but overdoing it sometimes can cause issues. 
The big one to avoid, though, trans fats,、mm-hmm. which I know. I guess most things have taken it out now, right? That's right, and and that was、um, that was illegal or not legal, but the government did put some、um, restrictions on that. So products have to have less than a half a gram of trans fat now, otherwise they. Can't produce the product, whatever it is.、So. Yeah, yeah,、mm-hmm. and I think we had enough. That one was pretty easy to point. Enough studies to show, like, hey, this thing has no health benefit, only health harm. As a government with a population of people, probably don't want to make your population sicker by allowing them to eat this.、Mm-hmm. Funny enough, though, I saw、uh, an、uh, an advertisement on a bucket of KFC that said zero trans fat, <laughs> which I thought was、um, hilarious. Yeah. I get it, girl. That's advertisers. I guess so. Yeah, anything to reel you in. So if if something is trying to get your attention by saying zero trans fats, I mean, everything is supposed to technically be zero trans fat now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so don't go eat KFC just because just of that. because it says zero trans、mm-hmm. fat.、Um, so again, I guess going back to this diet, the concept is, and you know, people listen to our last podcast. The concept of the diet is we lower carbohydrates, lower insulin, stimulate a fasting state, and obviously, if we do that, then weight usually goes down. And I think in the real world data, we've seen that people seem to lose relatively quickly、uh, on the ketogenic diet. But the problem is, well, the long term study, six months a year out, it does not seem to be any more superior as far as a weight loss thing. Than say any other diet that works on calorie restricting, right? You may see a little bit quicker drop in the beginning, but overall, they all kind of level out and it evens out in the end. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's always the hard part because I think a lot. Of, you know, our big thing here is what can we sustain? You know, what is a sustainable type of diet? And you know, what I think most patients and most people struggle with is just this yo-yoing, this fluctuation. You know. I jump on another one. It works really, really well because you know, a I'm, you know, I'll tell you the funny story. I saw you know, the moment we start talking about carnivore diet, it popped up on my Instagram, and this guy was showing a video, right? And he's like,、um, you know, I used to eat whatever I want, you know, Twinkies and you know, bagels and all sorts of you know, since you junk. So he wanted to try the carnivore diet to see how you would feel. And so one he first day he had two. Grass-fed, you know, fillets for breakfast and dinner, and some ground turkey. I was at breakfast and lunch, and then some ground turkey for dinner. And he drank lots of water because he was really thirsty. And the next day, he felt amazing. <laughs> Which okay, but I feel like the it's not so much the meat as in he just stopped eating bad foods. Yeah, you just cut out the junk and drink some water and. You'll probably feel better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think you know. I, I guess the moral of the story is most people, if they try something like that, which whether it's keto or paleo or Atkins or some of these kind of lower carbohydrate or low low carbohydrate diets, the initial importance is just you're avoiding bad stuff.、Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, if you're on a ketogenic diet, you can't have pizza, you can't have donuts, you can't have Snickers bars, you can't have. Things that don't exist in nature, essentially.、Mm-hmm. And if you just do that, instantly people will lose weight. They'll feel better. But the problem is, I think, Melissa, and you're at the lifestyle medicine crew. Like sustainability is tricky. Yeah, it's difficult. You know, especially if you're following one of these super low carbohydrate diets and have to skip out on things like blueberries or you know just other healthy things that we would. Typically, get with just a well-balanced diet, we're missing out on that. And plus, just you know, in situations like you know, a family meal or different things like that, it's really hard to to stick with a program that's really rigid like that. So a lot of people do fall off the wagon, and a lot of what we see when that happens is people will gain their weight back pretty rapidly and. Sometimes even more weight than they lost, and then they kind of just yo-yo. So they'll try it again later on, saying, "I did really well with it the first time, lost you know thirty pounds or whatever, 
but then it's just kind of a cyclic thing. So they'll go back to it, lose the 30 pounds again, and then fall off for whatever reason, gain it back. And it's just a back and forth cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that gets really tricky. And I like what you said. I mean, you know, Atkins, when it first came out, it was wildly successful. I mean, they were building like Atkins workout diet, like kind of like Weight Watchers has those buildings. They were building Atkins ones all over the place. Um, but the hard thing with Atkins versus Weight Watchers is you just have to be so restrictive. Mm -hmm. And so, right, you go to Thanksgiving. We just had Thanksgiving. Delicious food. You know, grandma makes this pecan pie. And she's like, you've got to try a slice. And you can't. Mm -hmm. Right, or you do, and then the moment you do, you're like, ah, your body's like, I have not had Cards. this, <laughs> right? And so you end up, you know, kind of overeating. If you think about it, you know, I was looking at, you know, okay, so what would a, a, a ketogenic diet on a day, you know, a day look like? It's like, you know, I wake up, I have, you know, bacon with some eggs uh, and some more bacon, and in the middle of the day, I had a snack with a slim gin, uh, and then for lunch, I had steak. Uh, and that's it. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know? And then for dinner, I had chicken breast, um, and that's it, mm. you know? And then for evening snack, I had some pork rinds. <laughs> and, and then I had another like protein shake in between. And you're kind of like, wow, that's, that's really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. That's really hard to keep. And that's really hard to do every single day when you're at work and you look at the person next to you and they have their, you know, Big Mac, you mm -hmm. know, and you're just like, or, you, I mean, it's just anyway, that just sounds really, really difficult. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, really carbs, we, did, we didn't get into an obesity epidemic with good healthy carbohydrates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, you know, this isn't happening because of fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans. It's happening because of processed carbohydrates and mm -hmm. processed foods, you know. Right. Um, so... When we're looking at these different types of diets that are successful for weight loss, one kind of common thread is they do eliminate the junk. So those really refined carbohydrates, those really processed foods, we're getting rid of those first. And that's where a lot of the, the weight loss can come from in and of itself. Mm -hmm. You told me yesterday something about grandma. What was that thing you said? Oh, yeah. Um, I've heard that if... Your great grandmother would not be able to recognize the food. You shouldn't eat it. Mm -hmm. So, like, would your great grandmother, when she was like growing up as a child, recognize a Cheeto? <laughs> you know, <laughs> just things like that. Would mm -hmm. would that food be even recognizable to her? Mm -hmm. And no, it wouldn't. That's so. actually that's a really good. Yeah, if my, my grand grandma like what? I guess two things they would say is, A, you know, usually they say stop eating sugar. It'll ruin your dinner, you know, mm -hmm. and give you cavities. That's You know, that's good. If great grandma's like, don't eat that. I don't even know what that is. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an important one. Number two, usually they're like, stop snacking. You're going to mess up your dinner, which my kids, <laughs> Lord have mercy. They eat snacks like crazy and they won't eat. But it's true because when you snack, rarely do you snack on good things. Mm -hmm. You're just stuffing your mouth with things that, again, grandma can't recognize. So those are actually really, really, really good like bullet points. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Well, I guess to wrap up our podcast today, um, you know, we talked about the lower carbohydrate diet. Uh, we talked about uh, the concept of it, how lowering carbohydrates, lower insulin mimics this fasting state that people are in. And from a weight loss standpoint, it seems to work. Um, I think one area we touched on is probably there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. So the... The example I gave of the bacon mixed with a steak, mixed with more bacon, probably not the best way to do it. Mixed with Slim Jims and pork <laughs> rinds. Uh, a different way, maybe like, you know, okay, more fish, you know, more lean protein, more healthy fats like avocados and, and stuff like that. I know in Atkins, they count more net carbs than anything. So yeah, you can have vegetables uh, with fiber, you know, mm -hmm. to try to help balance some of that stuff. So there, if you are going to do something like this, there's a right way to do it. There's a crazy way to do it. Uh, definitely, that's something to kind of pay attention to. The science of it, as far as danger, is probably fine. You know, definitely the healthy fats we need. The the data for 
you know, the, the fully saturated fats is still kind of in the air, but the expert consensus is we should, if we're going to add more fat, we should limit how much fat we get from animal products, need it more for plants and fish and stuff like that. Um, and then the expert consensus of whether we should do it, I should kind of drum roll. <laughs> um, I think like we brought up, it's all up to you. Like if it's sustainable to you and you, I would even say if you and your family, can eat this way, then it might be something to think about. You know, it might be something that will work because, again, the safety data is fine. You will lose weight on it, mainly because you're eliminating all the junk, but it might help you improve the quality of your food too if you're looking mm-hmm. for grass-fed beef, you're looking for freshwater salmon, you know, stuff like that, uh, fresh-caught salmon. But if it's something that is like you're the only one that can do it, your kids and your husband or wife are totally not on board with this, then, then it might be a challenge. Right. Yeah. And you'll be back in that yo-yo cycle again. So like we've talked about before, just a lot of times it comes down to making those small sustainable changes over time. And then that adds up and it can be used lifelong rather than just something that you do periodically and cause a yo-yo effect. Yeah, we don't want a yo-yo because it's yeah. just it's just miserable. I think people get discouraged too. They mm-hmm. see it go down, then they they can't keep it up. Then it goes back up. Then they get discouraged. And then I think I think half of our human being instant gratification nature is we're just on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we're looking for the next thing. Uh, and really, if you think about it, like like so, we went through the history of it. It's just recycling the same mm-hmm. thing, same just, concept. Yeah, we just add a little spin to it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, you can't just call it a split squat. It's a Bulgarian split <laughs> yeah. squat, right? And you're like, it's not just a split squat. It's like mm-hmm. it's from Bulgaria. Mm-hmm. I was like. Actually, I can't even name that on the map right now. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's like we're always looking for the same thing. They're all just variations of the same thing. Um, but so from our standpoint, I think, you know, safety fine is fine. There's a right, right way to do it. Um, sustainability is up to you between you and your family and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, Melissa, next week, I think we start going to some of the maybe more studied ones like Mediterranean, mm-hmm. uh, plant-based. Mm-hmm. Uh, whole whole food, yeah. Um, whole thirty dash diet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That would be a good one yeah. because that one we actually have some pretty good scientific randomized control trial evidence on. So maybe that is an option for people. So listen again. Yes. Cool. All right, Melissa. Any final closing thoughts you have? I think we covered it. Yeah. Yeah, we hit our agenda. Yes. So on to the next one. Well, thanks again, Melissa. I hope you and your family get back to. Normal. I think we're on our way. Thank you. Yeah.